The Jack Benny Program. Starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Gentlemen, today, March 17th, is St. Patrick's Day. As you all know, St. Patrick drove the snakes out of Ireland. So today, we bring you a man who was run out of Waukegan, Jack Benny. <laughs> he said man there, anyway. Thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking. And Don, for your information, I wasn't run out of Waukegan. It was merely a request by the city fathers and mine. And being a sharp guy, I took the hint and two shirts and left. But let's not talk about me. After all, this is St. Benny's, I mean St. Patrick's Day. That's why I'm wearing this shamrock in my lapel. Shamrock? Yes. That's a moth that took a bite out of that $12 suit and turned green. Hey, right, don't be funny. This is a very good suit. Taste it. I mean, feel it. Anyway, why aren't you wearing something green today? I am wearing something green. See? Oh, yes, yes. What is it? It's that gold bracelet you gave me for Christmas. <laughs> Mary, that's an old joke. All I know is I polish my other bracelets. This one, the gardener takes care of. Well, that's appreciation for after all, Mary. It wasn't easy to get that bracelet. I spent over three hours at that claw machine. And now, ladies and gentlemen... <laughs> good, I didn't know it was going to be that good. Over there. You know, you're Say, Jackson. Me. What? You're talking about St. Patrick's Day. Did I ever tell you the one about that friend of mine who got an Irish car? An Irish car? Yeah, every time you blow the horn, it plays Ireland must be heaven because my motor came from there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Harris, you're the Barry Fitzgerald of the Bobby Sox. <laughs> now pull out your garters and get out of here, will you? Put on your garters, right? He always tries to run hey, one Jack, get what? Jack, uh, since this is St. Patrick's Day, uh, don't you think we ought to do this a This program is starting out like we had no rehearsals at all. <laughs> And you want to know something? We did it. <laughs> Everybody walks in any time they want. <laughs> hey, Jackson, they holler. What is it? What, what is well, it? Well, Jack, this being St. Patrick's Day, don't you think we ought to do a little play for our Irish listeners? Well, we're doing better than that, Don. Tonight, for the first time since his release from the Navy, Dennis Day, the smiling Irish songbird, will be back with us. Oh, so the kid's coming back, huh, Jackson? Yep. Gosh, Jack, Dennis has been gone for two years. I'll bet the Navy has changed him a lot. I bet it has to. Anyway, he ought to be here by now. I think I'll call his house and see what's keeping him. Say, Mabel, what is it, guys, Phil? <laughs> Mr. Benny's line is flashing. Yeah, I wonder what Bloomer Girl wants now. <laughs> I'll find out. Hello, Mr. Benny. Huh? Can I say? What's his number? Okay, I'll call you back when I get him. Say, Mabel, did you hear Mr. Benny's program last week? Yeah, Ray Malin was on it. Gosh, he's wonderful, even if he is the lost weekend. <laughs> Listen, Mabel, if you think Milan is the lost weekend, you should have a date with Benny. <laughs> Those are my sentiments exactly. You want to know something, Gertrude? What? The contest has been over for six weeks and I still can't stand him. <laughs> yeah You know, Mabel Two weeks ago he asked me to go to the Academy Award ceremonies But I had another date Gee, guys, said, how come Mr. Benny always asks you to all those swanky affairs? Well, why shouldn't he? After all, my mother gave him the best years of her life <laughs> um, You know, I wouldn't mind going out on a date with Mr. Benny But he's a sneaky type Sneaky? Yeah, he's the kind who lures an unsuspecting girl into his car, drives her out to a dark spot, pretends he's out of gear, stops the car, and then spends the next two hours talking about his picture. <laughs> it's enough to discourage a person, believe me. <laughs> You know, Mabel, I got a confession to make. Once I let Mr. Benny kiss me, why, go to gear shift. <laughs> Say, uh, tell me, Gertrude, what are his kisses like? 
Well, it's like when you're blowing bubble gum and the bubble collapses against your face. <laughs> I'd rather have the gum. <laughs> yes. Yeah. See, Dennis Day's number doesn't answer. I better tell Blue Eyes about it. Hello? Oh, we'll try him again later, Gertrude. Goodbye. Oh, say, Gertrude, uh, what are you doing tonight? Tomorrow night? Tuesday night? <laughs> Wednesday night? Thursday night? Christmas Eve? <laughs> oh, you're you're going to visit your mother. Well, don't be surprised when you walk in, sister. <laughs> Goodbye. Well, we might as well get on with the show till Dennis gets here. Come on, Phil, let's have a band number. <laughs> Played by Phil Harris and his Hour of Harm Orchestra. <laughs> hey, Phil, you know, this is a battery day. Why don't you do something for the occasion? Something Irish. I did. I put a harp in my band. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. You got a girl playing it. See, you know, her fingers must get callous and sore plucking on all those strings. Well, it's her own fault, Jackson. She forgot the bow, so let her do the best she can. <laughs> She's our orchestra leader for ten years now. <laughs> Phil, you don't use it. Come in. I beg your pardon, but hello again. Dennis! 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 Welcome back, kid. Welcome back. Gee, it's good to see you. Gosh, Mary, doesn't he look wonderful? Oh, he sure does. Oh, boy, I never expected this. Are you going to kiss me too, Miss Livingston? <laughs> I certainly, Dennis. Doggone, Dennis, I can't get over. You look so mature. You've changed so. Well, sure he's changed, Jackson. This kid's been in the Navy for two years. He's grown up. Yeah, up. <laughs> hmm. uh, Dennis, tell us about yourself. Did you enjoy your two years in the Navy? I sure did, Miss Livingston. The Navy's wonderful. I went all over the South Pacific, and I saw plenty. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine you did, kid. <laughs> Say, hey, I bet you had a lot of fun, too. Say, Dennis. Dennis, I've been wanting to ask you something. Uh, tell me, kid, uh, how about those waves? That's what made me seasick. <laughs> yeah, yeah grown, grown up. up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Dennis, I was all over the South Pacific, too, and I ran into some pretty rough seas. In fact, once I was tossed overboard. Oh, I was tossed overboard lots of times. You were? Yeah, but the captain made the fellows cut it out. Dennis, the boys kept throwing you overboard. That's terrible. Oh, it wasn't so bad. The Japs kept throwing me back. <laughs> he was a pickle in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> Say, Dennis, when you first joined the Navy, how did they know how to classify you? I mean, how did they know what rank to give you? Oh, that was easy, Miss Livingston. First, I had to fill out a lot of forms, answer a lot of questions, and then for two days, they gave me a written test. For two days? See, that must have been quite a test. And after it was all over, they made me an ensign. An ensign? An ensign? Yeah. I wonder what they'd have made me if I'd have passed. <laughs> Maybe just as well you didn't. We won the war this way. 
Well, come on, Dennis. We all want to hear a song. What's it going to be? Well, since today is St. Patrick's Day, I thought I'd sing Danny Boy. That's swell. Go sure. Go right ahead. Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling From glen to glen and down the mountainside The summer's gone and all the roses falling It's you, it's you must go and I must buy but come ye back when summer's in the meadow, or when the valley's soft and white with snow. It's I'll be here in sunshine or in And all the flowers are dying If I am dead, as dead I well may be He'll come and find the place where I am lying And kneel and say an ave for me and I shall hear the soft you tread above me, and all my grave will warm sweet of thee. For you will bend and tell me that you sung by Dennis Day. And now... Say, Mr. Benny, I meant to ask you, how's Mr. Allen? Who? Fred Allen. Well, kid, it was nice seeing you again. <laughs> no, no, Phil. In fact, I'm glad he brought it up. Dennis, I'm happy to tell you that Fred Allen has the same old program, the same old joke, the same oh, old... Oh, wait a minute, Jack. That's not fair. I've heard all of Fred's programs, and they've been very funny. Yeah, but Mary, I wouldn't mind if his joke just laid there. But they crawl out of the radio and stain your rugs. <laughs> Some program. That just shows what you know, Jackson. I think the funniest thing in radio is Alan's Alley. Oh, you do, huh? Yeah. I think so, too. Oh, you do, eh? I think so, too. Oh, you do, eh? I think Mr. Benny is much funnier than Mr. Allen. I think so, too. <laughs> oh, you do, eh? <laughs> yes, I do. And, that, and, what, and what's so great about Alan's Alley? Anybody with half an ounce of talent can do that. Oh, yeah? I'd like to see you do it. Well, I'll just show you, sister. Phil, get your band ready while I put this clothespin on my nose so I'll sound like Fred Allen. Now, I'll go down to the alley, and you kids will play the parts of the people that live there. Okay, Phil, music. <laughs> And so, Kenny Delmar, I won't say it's been very windy, but last oh, night... Oh, Mr. Allen! Mr. Allen! Well, well, if it isn't Cleveland. <laughs> Gee, 
Cleveland, Tenny, Delmar, and I were just discussing the high wind we've been having here. Well, Mama says that all the wind is caused by the pickets. The pickets? <laughs> She says they carry their signs too high and walk too fast. And Mama also says... Uh, just said... a minute, Cleveland. I have a brother-in-law in the last row who's not quite through laughing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I imagine your mother knows all about pickets. I understand she's been picketing Lindy's restaurant because the lamb chops look better in their panties than she does in slacks. <laughs> Oh, Mama, I don't know. You is... write this stuff on Thursday, and then on Sunday, nothing happens. <laughs> what was that, Cleveland? Oh, Mama doesn't wear slacks anymore. She doesn't? Why did she stop wearing slacks? A policeman gave her a ticket for pulling a trailer without a license. <laughs> well, so much for your mother and her homegrown bustle. We've got to get down to Benny's Boulevard. Uh, what is your question? for tonight. Our question is, is Fred Allen or Jack Benny the better comedian? Shall we leave? As one of my eyes said to the other, let's pack our bags and go. <laughs> well, I see Senator Harris is home. There's a ten-gallon hat and a five-gallon jug on the porch. <laughs> let's knock on the bunghole and see what he's got to say. Somebody, I say, somebody knock. Yes, I... Harris is the name. Senator Harris, that is. I'm from the West. From the West, When eh? I'm east of the Mississippi River, I'm in enemy territory. <laughs> I hate the East. My favorite actress is Mae West. Look, no look. man living can make me go see East Lynn. Oh, I, I never go out of the house on Easter Sunday. Senator, When oh. I bake bread, I won't use East. That's ye. I thought you'd get a rise out of it. <laughs> Son, what you got on your mind? This is a free country. Well, I never saw anyone like this on your mouth, just like the front door of General Motors. Wide open, but nothing's coming out. You're tired, eh? <laughs> Well, Senator, the question tonight is, who is the better comedian, Fred Allen or Jack Benton? I brought, I say, I brought it up in the Senate. Now watch this one, son. It's pretty. I brought it up in the Senate, and it made Senator Tidings glad. Ha, ha, ha. Glad Tidings. That's a pun, son. I heard. That's an anecdote, an anecdote. Now, wait a minute. You're like a midget, son. Everything goes over your head. Own up, son. You got a mind like a chicken. What? A cluck, that is. <laughs> Look, Senator, just tell me which comedian you like best, Allen or Benny? Where's Allen from? Boston. How about Benny? He's from Waukegan. Waukegan's west of Boston, ain't it? Yes. Benny's the one. So long, son. So long. Remember the words of Horace Greeley. Go west, young man. West, that is. So long. So long. So long. So long. So long. Where's that sound effect, man? Oh, he's there. I suppose the senator has gone back to his newspaper. He spends all night reading Westbrook Pegler. I wonder, I wonder if Dennis Day, I mean Titus Day, is at home. He's always so moody. Howdy, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Day, I see you're at home. Yep, day in and day out, days in. <laughs> But you say your eyes look all red. Been crying, Bob, reading a sad book. What's the title of it? Forever Amber. <laughs> the title is Forever Amber isn't a sad book. Here's when you're my age, Bob. <laughs> Very important question to ask you tonight. Who do you think is the better comedian, Fred Allen or Jack Benny? Well, Bob, that's a moot question. Moot question? Yep. Moot be Allen, moot be Benny. I see. Well, which one do you consider the better comedian? Never hear them myself. When they come on, I put my radio out in the hen house. In the hen house? Why? Steps up production. Every, every time Allen and Benny lay an egg, my hens try to match it. And that really increases your egg production. Did up to last Sunday. What happened last Sunday? 
All my hens kill themselves straining. So long, boss. <laughs> I guess Mr. Day has his trouble, just like the city folks. Let's try this next house. People in the middle and the mustard on top. <laughs> just the way you like him in the whole Ah, oh, Mr. Kitzel. Hmm, you was expecting maybe Fibo McGee and Molotov? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Tell me, Mr. Kitzel, how is the hot dog business? <laughs> Very good, except for one thing. My customers have trouble making up their minds. Making up their minds? Yeah. To what? Whether they want the pickle in the middle and the mustard on top, or the mustard in the middle and the pickle on top. <laughs> I can see where that would pose quite a problem. Anyway, what I'm trying to find out tonight is who you think is the better comedian, Fred Allen or Jack Benny. In my house, that is making arguments. My wife, Tulule, is liking Fred Allen. And you? I am liking the great Gilderstein. <laughs> oh, the great Gildersleeve. Yes, when Gilderstein is broadcasting, Tululi is leaving the room. I see. When Fred Allen is broadcasting, I am leaving the room. What happens when Jack Benny is broadcasting? Mm -hmm. The radio is leaving the room. <laughs> what? People in the middle and the mustard on top, just the way you like them and the whole <laughs> Suppose Mr. Kitzel's life would be complete if people could just make up their minds where they want the mustard. Well, here's the last house in the alley. I wonder what a knock here will bring. Greetings, all. It's time for play. For Rogers here with Rondelay. <laughs> you have more poems for us tonight. Oh, indubitably. Have you heard? Does the rum to the gin, I understand you're going steady with Ray Land. No. Oh, I said to myself, this is not for me, as I picked up the dice and threw a three. No. Oh, my mother has rolled her stockings down since she heard Van Johnson is back in town. That's it. Right. Tonight we are trying to find out who is the better comedian, Fred Allen or Jack Benny. Precisely why I'm here. I have written a poem. Now, what is your... <laughs> now, what... now, what... Wait till I get this on site. Now, what is your comedian's poem called? Alan or Benny. How does it go? Alan or Benny. The question rings, and the nation is put to a test. From city to hamlet, you hear the cry, is Alan or Benny best? Alan has bags, and Benny is cheap, and they're both on Sunday night. So millions of people from coast to coast tune in to hear them fight. And I often wonder just what it means as they hurl their epitaphs. For while they're knocking each other out, Cass Daly gets all the laughs. <laughs> well, I Thank you, Rochester Openshaw. And now Phil Harris and his no-goodman orchestra will play onesie-twosie because that's as high as they can count. Take it, boys. <laughs>